Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series that I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. This video is a direct continuation of the previous videos that I've been doing where we're showing a little bit about how to use the XR2 Ravenstar. We took off from KSC, got up into orbit, we did a rendezvous and docking with the ISS, then in the last video, we undocked from the ISS and we started setting up our deorbit and reentry procedure. So we're picking right up at that point. We are halfway around from the base. We just completed our deorbit burn. We brought our altitude down, you know, to uh, 20 kilometers, something like that. Anywhere between zero and 40 is fine. It doesn't have to be all that precise. So now in this section of the uh, video we're going to warp time forward get over to entry interface and then hopefully land uh, without any trouble so we're currently at an altitude of 364 kilometers we won't get down to entry interface until we are at 120 kilometers so we're just going to warp time forward rotation. to get closer to that point but as we're going forward i'm going to put in a little bit of rotation here just a couple kicks, and now we can warp time forward at 100, and that'll get us rotated around toward prograde. And we're also getting closer to entry interface. Let's go ahead and come back out of time warp, to kill rotation, and let's continue going forward. Altitude's down to 165, so we're almost at entry interface. When we get down to entry interface, we want to do another check of all of our systems to make sure that everything's closed up so that we are good to go for atmospheric re-entry and I know that we still have the radiator deployed but again we don't want to close up the radiator till we absolutely have to and the time that we absolutely have to is when we get about entry interface we could actually leave it out till we were down to 95 kilometers but it's probably good practice to do all this right at entry interface which is 120 kilometers and we're there you can see our altitude's 115 warning re-entry check failed so with this view we press the number nine that's on the top of the keyboard it's not the numeric keypad but the top of the keyboard and it gives us this re-entry checklist and it tells us that everything's green except for the radiator so let's start the apu give it a second to get going close the radiator and once that's closed, our re-entry checklist will be all green. Re-entry check, all systems green. All systems green, so let's turn the APU back off for now. And let's go to F8, so we have these larger MFDs to look at. We do not need uh, orbit MFD any longer. Let's bring up surface MFD on this side and we can kind of warp time forward a little bit more because uh, we don't really get too much out of the atmosphere till we get down to you know 80 or so kilometers but one thing I can see is that my distance to the base is actually increasing so I know that if I roll the vessel the other way it will actually decrease so let's go ahead and do that let's roll over Although it doesn't really matter, you know, again, we're the distance off base is such a small number that it's not going to matter too much. Actually, uh, it's not decreasing, and the reason for that is because we are our velocity is changing slightly as we're, you know, going down through the atmosphere. We're technically speeding up a little bit here at first. We'll slow down in a moment, but at the moment, at the moment, we're still speeding up because we haven't hit the part of the atmosphere yet that will cause any sort of. Um, cause any sort of braking and you can see actually here our acceleration we're still accelerating at 0 0.20 meters per second squared so that's the reason that the uh, distance to the base is changing because uh, this prediction you know is based on you know rotation of the planet and uh, and how fast you're currently going so since since we're speeding up the predictions changing a little bit we can switch over to uh, surface mode and now that we're down to 
uh, 80 kilometers. Let's get a little farther down. Probably wait till the acceleration actually reaches zero. Mock 26. About right here. We can go ahead and roll heads up. And we can start thinking about setting up our our attitude hold. A couple ways we can do that. The easier way is to uh, go to number two, and that's again at the top of the keyboard, set the AOA here. Make sure you change that so that it says set AOA. And put in about 45 degrees of AOA, and then hit engage. That'll start the APU automatically. The alternate method is to just set your center of gravity manually, but for the absolute beginner, I think this method's easier. And let's bring up uh, Arrow Brake MFD on this side. We've talked a little bit, uh, we talked about how to use this MFD in one of the previous videos. Let's target Cape Canaveral and Page and Projection. And this tells us, uh, let me switch over to this view. We've got too much angle of attack. So let's press the number eight to lower our AOA down. And that's number eight on the numeric keypad, by the way. So let's put in number eight a few times. And we can see that this green line is extending out to this point here. And remember that this box up here is a zoomed in view of what we see here. So we want to have our green line end pretty close to the base. And since right now using eight and two is a bit too much of an adjustment, I'm gonna to switch to the internal view and just do a 0.05 adjustment. We want a little bit more AOA, not much, but we need a little bit more than this because currently this is showing that we're passing the base. So it looks like maybe 36 or maybe 36.5, eh, a little bit more. And actually, I forgot to dump the fuel. I was going to do that. I, I forgot to do it. It's, it's probably not a good idea to do it now. So 37 degrees of AOA and getting closer, but we're still a bit out. So let's bring that up a little bit more, and that's better. So you can see with 37.5 degrees of AOA, angle of attack, we're gonna run out of energy at about that point. And we're a little bit off from the dead center of the base, that's fine. This is saying that we're gonna arrive and we're gonna be a little bit south of KSC. If we want, we can adjust uh, our bank using four and six on the numeric keypad. In this case, we would be adjusting four. That'll bring this closer to the center of the base and we may be okay with getting a little bit closer again we don't necessarily want to arrive straight dead center because if we're going to land at one of the runways it's not a bad idea to show up to the north or to the south a little bit so coming straight down the middle doesn't necessarily matter so we'll go ahead and just put in a we'll leave ourselves a little bit to the south here but I think we could probably put in just another 0 0.05 of angle of attack. And I think maybe if I do control two, no, that doesn't work. Uh, I was going to say, you know, because if you do two and eight on the numeric keypad, it adjusts by 2.5 degrees at a time. But if I go down to 38 degrees and then come back to this view so we can see a little bit better, that, that looks a little bit better to me. Um, it, it's never a bad idea to have a little bit of excess energy. So, so we may extend this out a little bit farther later on, but for now, that's looking pretty good. Okay, let's bring up map MFD, just so we can see where we are. We're 3,700 kilometers out from the base. Let's track our position, which is already there, so let's zoom in a bit. And now we just have to be patient and let ourselves glide down through the atmosphere. Uh, we can't really get away with a whole lot of time warp, when you're doing landings. If you're really impatient, you can bring, you can press control F2 and adjust the slider to maybe two or three time warp while we're still here, you know, in this part of the atmosphere. But once we get really close to the base, uh, we don't want any time warp at all. But definitely, in my opinion, do not
press T to go out to 10x because that can cause all kinds of crazy oscillations and it will turn a, an otherwise perfectly good flight into a total failure. But you can usually get away with two or three time warp uh, when you're just descending down through the atmosphere. The attitude hold autopilot's good enough that it won't, it won't do anything too crazy. But as we are getting closer, I can see that our prediction here in Aerobrick MFD is showing that we're coming up a little short. I don't want that. So I'm going to go back to this view. And I'll have to do a little oh, bit of research to find out what I have to press. Let me see. Maybe it's Alt-8. Yep. Okay, so I can get I can change the AOA with, uh, you know, 8 and 2 or Alt-8 and 2 just to do the 0.05 oh, adjustment. 22. So let's do that. So Alt-8 and Alt-8 again. And Alt-8 one more time. 21. And that looks pretty good to me because that gets us all the way to the base and a little bit of energy to spare. And we might want to press Alt-8 again a little bit later. We'll see. Mark 20. Uh, let's go to real time for a moment at least. And let's look at our temperature display here. It's number 3 at the top of the keyboard. That's not the numeric keypad, but press 3 to change these. And we can see we're warming up, but I know from experience that uh, you know we're going to be fine because we're already slowed down by over a thousand meters a second, and we're you know our vertical speed is basically Mark nothing. 19. But it's enough to get a nice, pretty plasma display at least. <laughs> but it, we're not red hot by any means. We're nowhere close to overheating. You can land the uh, you can bring the XR2 down with a much higher temperature than this. Information. I can see that we're overshooting the base a little bit, so we'll want to make some adjustments there as we get in a little bit closer. Right now, we're still 1,700 kilometers out. I'd say peak heating is past. In all likelihood, we're not going to. Uh, in all likelihood, we're not going to see a point where we get really hot again, because so we're all the way down to 5,800 meters a second skipping up out of the atmosphere a little bit at this point um, maybe skipping up out isn't the right term but we're our altitudes increasing slightly so we're kind of doing a bit of a bounce zoom in a bit on our location still 1500 kilometers out and we can get away with the two or three X And you can see now the uh, light show is over. Mach 17. As our vertical speed gets into the negative, we may warm up again. I don't know if we'll warm up enough, though, to get any more plasma. But this is how we use these MFDs. Let me go back to 1x. Uh, we just 16. we watch arrow break MFD to help uh, help guide ourselves in so that we know when we're you know running out of energy and when I get down to less than a thousand meters out I like to bring up glide slope MFD that's glide slope 2 and we did a I did a video on how to use this one as well press mod so that we can get to the horizontal situation and CFG we already have Cape Canaveral selected and we're gonna go to runway guessing that we're going to land on runway 15 because we're coming out of the north and heading south. Mach 15. So that being the case, I'm actually going to put in a little bit more uh, left bank and a little bit of Alt 2 to increase my angle of attack a little bit because we're coming in a bit long. A little bit more left bank. So if we're going to land on runway 15, we want to arrive a bit to the north of the base. So previous runway, there it is, there's 15, and we are in the XR, although this doesn't actually matter because we're not using the glide slope. Mark 14. But this indicator gives us an idea of how far you know left or right we are, and according to this indicator we actually want more left bank because this control symbol is to the left. So we're going to put in quite a bit more left bank. And that will pull our vessel more to the north. 
and we'll get more in line with what we can see here according to glide slope. I'm going to turn the hack display off, so either left open or right open, either way. Clear that, start over. A little bit more left bank because we are still getting behind according to a glide slope if we want to land on runway 15. And let me bring my joystick around because once we get down below a thousand meters a second or so in velocity, I want to turn off all the autopilots and do the landing. So this is why it's helpful to have these types of MFDs though because you can see right now we're pointed basically at the sky. We can't really see where we're going. So if we didn't have these instruments to use, then it would be very difficult to know if we were on track with the base or not. As this starts to decrease, uh, we're getting closer and closer. It's a good idea to start rolling back out towards center. <clears throat> so just every couple degrees, I'm going to do put in a little bit more right roll to eliminate some of the left roll. So now we're down to about negative four. So get rid of a little more roll. And we're really close to the base now. We're only 200 and uh, it's about 200 kilometers out. Mach All the way down to 2,800 meters a second. Let's take out some more roll. And I'm going to Alt 2 to put in a little bit more angle of attack. Slow ourselves down a little bit more because we're only 130 kilometers out. Everything is looking pretty good. We're still a bit south according to uh, according to glide slope, so we'll maybe put in a little bit more left roll. Mach seven. Down to about 2,000 meters a second. So here very soon we'll be shutting off the attitude hold. We can do that just by pressing the letter L on the keyboard. We're at 30 kilometers altitude. Mach 6. Okay, we're flying basically over top of the base now, so we're going to have to kind of fly out a little bit and come back in. Put in a little bit of additional up elevator or up angle of attack just to do a little bit more braking and eliminate all that roll that we have. Okay, we're down to a thousand meters a second, so let's press L, shuts off the autopilot, and get rid of the trim. So trim is zero. Oops. Stress. Have to be careful with that. Off. Turn off linear translation and turn on surface off. controls. And now we just need to turn around, fly Mark back three. toward toward KSC. I have no idea what that sound is. It's like a brand new sound. I've never heard it before in orbiter. And we said we were going to go for runway 15, so let's go ahead and stick to that, even though at this point it would be probably easier to land on runway 33. Mach 2. Let's take a look down below. There's runway 15 slash 33. So we're going to fly up this way a bit and then turn back and come in for a landing. And we're at about 18 kilometers altitude, so we have plenty of height. Now what I'm going to do on this MFD is I'm going to reset it. I'm going to clear. 
and hit OK. And I'm just gliding out to the north a bit to get in front of the runway. And then we'll turn in and come back toward the runway. If you look here at this MFD, you can see this is the runway that we're aiming for. And this is our current location. And these plus signs indicate our current flight path. If we wanted to, we could do this whole circular thing around the hack, but I don't ever do that. So I just go to uh, open, which is R-O or L-O. But you can see if you wanted to do a complete flight, you would bank here, turn out, come in, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna fly straight forward, get in front of the runway a bit, then bank in hard and come in and land. So, and the MFD, down there just lets you know kind of your orientation as compared to the runway, which I find very useful because obviously with this viewpoint, you know, we don't really know uh, where the runway's at or where we are at in you know, relation to the runway. And we can use our hat switch to kind of look around a little bit, but I feel like that's kind of cheating because if you're really in the cockpit, obviously you can't look straight down below you like that. It doesn't work that way. Subsonic. So using instrumentation, I think, is a bit more realistic. Okay, now we're going to turn, because I think we're far enough in front of the runway, I think. And you can see that that projection, those, those plus signs are kind of the projection for how we're turning. And I want to get in line with that yellow line on the side. And according to that MFD, my current, the, the amount of bank that I currently have is more than enough to get me completely turned around and headed back toward the runway. We're still at 13 kilometers, almost 14 kilometers. We slowed down a lot, but we should still have enough altitude to uh, turn completely around and glide back in. Doing a really hard turn here because we want to get turned around quickly. And we're going to roll out very soon. And we'll be looking right at the runway. It's coming into view. See the vehicle assembly building? Yeah, we are plenty high enough, that's for sure. In fact, we kind of need to do a little bit of an S turn in order to slow down. Let's throw out the air brake. For as high as we are, you know, we need to have a lot of down pitch in order to arrive at the runway. You can see I'm at 40 degrees down pitch right now. So we're very, very high up. I should have, I could have gone farther out. I just wasn't sure since I was slowing down so much how far out I could go. But now we don't really need the MFDs anymore but it's still, they can still be useful to some extent. If you look at that green plus plus indicator, you can see you know, how it is in relation to the runway. 5,000. And here at this part, it's all 4, feel, 000. it's all experience. Let's bring the air brake back in for now. 3,000. Now I'm just going to put the velocity vector right on the runway and just watch my altitude and watch my speed. I want to 2, be around 200 meters a second as I'm crossing over the beginning of the runway, a little less than that. You are cleared to land. We'll throw out the landing gear. Let's put out the air brake. We need to slow down a little bit more first. 900, 800. 700, 600. Okay, we're slow enough for the landing gear. 400, Let's bring back in the air brakes so we don't stall and slam the runway. Now we just need to watch our vertical speed. 50, 20, 9, 4, 2. And 
nice touchdown at 1.183 meters per second, pretty much right on the center of the runway. So now we've got the wheel brakes put out, although we probably could slow down to a stop without the brakes. Since we managed to touch down right at the start of the runway. And we'll have wheel stop here in just a moment. Wheel stop. There's wheel stop. Once you have wheel stop, it's uh, not a bad idea to maybe open the hatch or something, get some fresh air. Cabin hatch. That's there at the top, and that gets uh, outside air. And that also prevents your uh, coolant from increasing, I think. Maybe it doesn't. Well, it stops your locks from decreasing anymore, so we're not, you know, burning through our locks anymore, but it hardly matters because, you know, we're now we're at Earth. Uh, turn the APU off, and that's going to be it for this flight. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the whole trip in the XR to Ravenstar from KSC up to the ISS and back down to KSC. Uh, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video, uh, leave your comments down below and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and you like all this spacey content stuff so you can be notified when I upload new Orbiter videos. And I will see you in the next video.